Vereinigten Parliament. Karen Melcher to the stage and give her a warm applause. Thank you very much. One of us on the stage enjoys applauses more than, than the other, and I don't think holding her back will, uh, will help. Um, this European flag is, uh, is all of ours, but it's also what has been the center of a lot of debates and policy fights for a free and open internet for the last few years, for the last few decades. Uh, there is copyright reform, there is a fight for net neutrality, there is upload filters, there is a lot of the things that you've been discussing uh, in this camp and that you'll be discussing in the, the CCC camp uh, further on. We now have a new um, term for both the European Parliament, we also have a new term for the European Commission, and we will be having Let's see if this works. It might not work. Flag is blowing in the wind. Um, we will be having th this lady, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, as the head of the European Commission. She had a speech in the European Parliament where she described the digital change as follows. She was discussing the French wheat farmers uh, experiencing drought. She was discussing uh, the French population uh, experiencing a deadly heat wave. And then she was talking about the concrete effects of digitalization. If this is the view from the highest place in the European Commission on how digitalization is, I think we should be kind of worried if it's seen as something as destructive to the way that we live as the climate change is. I have titled this talk as a, a new digital frontier because I think that we're moving into uncharted territory. During the different battles that we've had so far, we have had a community of people fighting for the internet, fighting for the use of digitalization that have not uh, been meeting that much unified resistance from politicians and media as we have seen the last few years. I believe that the copyright reform recently was one of the times where we saw the old industry protecting their business models in an effective way where we were not able to stop the reforms and to stop the upload filters that have been included in the new directive. So how, what, is, what is on our horizon as we, exp as we start out in the next five years? There has been leaked the document and there's been leaked lead some intentions from the European Commission about looking into especially digital platforms and also looking into the e-commerce directive. The e-commerce directive allows us as users to upload uh, content without the platforms being held responsible. What we're seeing is the European Commission wanting to hold these platforms responsible for the content that the users are uploading to a much larger extent than it has been up until now. The, the problem for me is that they see platforms as a unified thing. Instead of seeing platforms as multifunctional, they only see them as having, having one function and only being regulated in one way. But each platform has different users, usages for each user and also the number of uses that we have for each platform is ever increasing. And the way that we regulate the platforms shouldn't be um, exclusive to one way of seeing each platform. If we look at, for example, Facebook, it's a sales platform on their marketplace. It's a repository for pictures. It is a message platform. It is an iMessage platform. And all of these uses have different responsibilities for the platform and for the users. But if you view, as a, from a regulatory point of view, if you view the platform as just being one thing, 
you won't be able to actually regulate it in a, in a well-functioning way. I think we should, instead of looking at the platforms and looking at the way the digital tools are as a, a knife on our dinner table, we should perhaps more see it as the Swiss Army knife that we used to have in our pockets when we could still have pocket knives. It has multiple functions according to what you pull out, and we should therefore allow for this in the regulation that we have. Unfortunately, it seems like the way that we regulate at the moment is not used to having multifunctional digital tools, multifunctional digital platforms or media. If you see if you see the platforms as a distributor of news and you want to regulate it as a traditional media, I think you've un misunderstood what kind of a platform, what a platform is and how it can be used from different, different users' perspectives. And we would need to have a way of regulating this that corresponds to the different uses that we have. It's also a new frontier in the way that we've been used to having digital tools, we've been used to having the internet as a tool that regulates part of our life. But where I see it now is that everything in the way that we live our lives is being formed by the way that digital tools and, and digitalization um, is regulated and is being used. Therefore, we need to be able to build in the values that we want in our society into the digital world instead of just having it as something that is, um, is considered a tool, is considered technological behind a screen. In order to do that, we need to look at, well, what are, what are the values that we have? What are the things that we want to protect? What are the what are the people that are creating the tools? We all come with different backgrounds and different ways of seeing the world. If we are not aware of the consequences that the tools that we build, uh, then, we will be able, then we will be creating um, a world where we build in values into society that we do not agree with and perhaps build in discrimination and biases into the technology that we're building. In order to look at this, we need to actually think about where, what is the end goal of what you're doing. You can't any longer say, well, I'm only building a small mechanical thing, a technological thing that will be helping to a short-term goal. You actually have to look at, well, what will the consequences of the tool that you're building be for the society that you want to be living in. There is, there is not a lot of ways of doing this that is clear at the moment. You will have to actually think about, well, what are, how do you see the world from different perspectives? We all have our own personality that we bring into the room. Some of us also bring a dog that you might be able to hear on the video. Um, but you need to be aware of what you're bringing into a team, what you're bringing into the technology that you're building in order to avoid the technology that you're building being imbued with values that you don't want to see enlarged or increased in the world. And I think that's why we need to stop looking at digital regulation as just a technological mean and a way of regulating a platform or a technology, but a way of actually looking at which world we want to create and which world we want to live in. And that's why we need to have not just technology, but values as the focus for, for the regulation that we have. A lot of the time, though, when we talk about values, when we talk about the ideology that we have, we often talk about what we do not want. Uh, we do not want discrimination. We do not want criminalization of free speech. Uh, we do not want journalists to be put in jail. We do not want um, whistleblowers to be put in jail. There is a whole list of what we do not want. 
but that's not going to make that's not going to be able to change the world into the place that we that we would like to see if we're only fighting against something i don't think that we can change the world into the future that we want i think we need to be able to instill a sense of hope to people rather than just a, a fear or a protest because the protest movements have have made us come so far but i don't think that they will be able to continue working in creating a world that we want it will perhaps only be able to stop certain things and i think if we if we act in contrary to something that we do not want we actually boost what we do not want by giving it more oxygen and more power by continuing to address the things that we do not want so what should we what should we do to actually encourage and to let grow the values that we do want i think we should try and talk not about what we do not want but what we do want we do want a society where we all have equal opportunity and we are able to create the future for ourselves that we want uh, no matter where we are born what our skin color is which gender that we are and we should do that in a way in order to create that world we need to celebrate those that open up the world for each other and create equal opportunities instead of going after those who are being discriminatory we should also look at ourselves and say what is what am i bringing to the table what am i what is my outset on the world a lot of us look at the world and see well i have fought my i fought my way here i have achieved these things i have gotten an education i've made it through a university i've gotten a job because i was self-made because i had all of these capabilities in myself that allowed me to come there i think often we forget the privileges that we have each of us and believe that we are pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps and have made the world our place and our place in the world we need to be able to see well what is it that i've been given by the world as well and also therefore realize what luck and what privileges that we have and therefore be able to give those same privileges to others so instead of only saying well we don't want we don't want trump we don't want danish people's party we don't want populism we don't want censorship well then try and look at well what kind of what kind of world which values do we want and how will the tools and the digital world that we are creating how will that actually contribute to this and look into well what are what could the biases that we're building in uh end up creating or destroying and the world that we see i think that it's important to to try and say well what are what are the hopes that we what are the hopes that we see i think instead of we need to put pressure on the politicians that are regulating them and i'm hoping that you will be be helping me in um, in being able to shift the digital agenda and also push for the right things instead of instead of the wrong but i think we should also celebrate the advances that we've already had that we have made some positive progress we have ensured net neutrality in the eu we did stop acta now many years ago the reform of the copyright directive was not quite as bad as we could have seen it be we did get exceptions for libraries we did get exceptions for uh, wikipedia and try and promote the champions of the values that we want instead of only pushing and punishing the the things that are are going against there are a few things that will be be coming up during the next um five years there is the reform of the e-commerce directive that i mentioned earlier there is also the regulation of terrorist uh, content online and i think it's important in order to win these fights that we try and actually go in with a more sort of optimistic and 
positive approach to things rather than uh, going against things that we don't want. Uh, I think I'm, I'm going slightly in circles now. <laughs> so I hope, that, I hope that I've tried to give you an idea of trying, uh, using values of, as the basis of technological regulation and not only uh, looking at regulation of, of digital issues as a technical aspect, but also looking into, well, how do, we, how do we make sure that the values that we want to live by and the w values that we want in our world are actually part of the technology that we have? And I hope that there is a microphone somewhere and that you have comments and critique and ideas of what I uh, should be spending my time on for the next five years. Yes, uh, I have a question. Uh, you say that you shouldn't uh, punish uh, those uh, that we don't like. Uh, and, and lately it has been uh, Google and Apple that got some fines. Do you think that is wrong to find those for uh, Apple Shop? No, I don't. Uh, it's not. Of course, if you have, I should stop moving around on the stage. Uh, you should, of course, use the powers that you have in order to make sure that companies actually adhere to the laws that we have. But I think, as a way of arguing for regulation and a way of arguing for the policies that you want. I think it's more effective to say, well, what is it, what is it that we do want, rather than saying, well, I do not want um, Trump, I do not want uh, racism. I, what is, what is it that you actually are wanting to promote and and celebrate? Hi, it's working. Uh, in the beginning, you said something about that people who are creating new technologies and are like innovative somehow, they should really consider and take care of what they are doing because it can be used in in a bad way. Do you have some examples, or because from from what I see, my perspective is everything that is quite of innovative can be used by the bad guys. So don't like. Put, put a pressure on uh, making a, a smaller project just to be sure that no one can use it for a bad thing. Or what could be used for a bad thing? Oh, that you said something that mm -hmm. people, but what, what could be used? Like everything. Um, if, if we stopped innovation by saying that this technology could also be used for bad, then I think uh, the world would kind of stop. And the world shouldn't stop. But I think you should be aware of, are we building a technology that will allow for discrimination, for example, uh, that will allow for using the data, for example, if you collect data and profile people, what kind of data will you allow to be collected and which kind of profiles will you allow to build on people? So that you don't end up having a, a filter mechanism or a, um, a digital profile on people that allows for discrimination that you would not have allowed for otherwise. By collecting different bits of information, then foreseeing that this would be a Hispanic or a black person or a person living in a specific area or their sexuality and therefore excluding them from seeing certain results or for getting certain jobs or for having insurances and these kinds of things. Hi. Um Thanks so far for the talk and uh, uh, having so much time actually available for asking you questions. Um, so I'm a journalist. I work for an organization called OZCRP. Um, we conduct investigations into uh, organized crime and, and, and uh, cross-border corruption. Um, uh, this is going to be slightly... Uh, so um, I know you're working on uh, parliamentary sort of uh, collaboration between the EU and, for example, like Azerbaijan. Um, Azerbaijan doesn't really have like the best uh, track record when it comes to being very nice to journalists. Uh, to put it very lightly, um, uh, you know, um, I would really love to hear your talks 
thoughts about you know how do we how do we still collaborate with the people that we can see as allies in the parliament in Azerbaijan, and how do we um, um, I think that's my question. I think it's you, for the rest of you, I, in the European Parliament, you both have different committees and then you also work with parliaments in other countries. And I am working with parliaments in Georgia, in Azerbaijan and in Armenia. And Azerbaijan does not have what any of us would call a democracy and there is repercussions for journalists and for human rights activists and I would find it very difficult to work with the government that's in place at the moment in Azerbaijan and therefore it's very important to work with civil society and the people that are actually working for democracy in that country. I'd love to talk to you more about it afterwards but it's slightly off the digital, <laughs> digital subject lines here but I mean what you could I mean, the technology that you build could also be technology in looking into, well, how does money actually move around? How do we open up the streams of money through the banks? How do we open up public budgets so that we can see corruption, so that we can give people the tools to actually protect their own society and protect their democracy against misuse of funds and corruption? And in that way, you can you can use the technology to actually promote the values that you want to see in society. And that is the openness that we can, that we can provide society with in society is hugely important to actually promote the values that I at least uh, would like to, to promote. Any other questions? Hello. So we have seen more and more that the nation states of Europe are beginning to ignore human rights. And with the European Union Charter on human rights, we've gotten a new way of fighting that. However, the Commission seems to be less than keen on opening infringement lawsuits against the states. Do you think that'll change in the future, or will it be up to us to file the lawsuits? I. Uh don't think that that will change without us actually doing something about it. I think that it's really important that we have individuals that file lawsuits and I think it's the work that has been done on Facebook's use of data in Austria, the work that uh, you, Rasmus, have been doing with Uloli Logging in Denmark on highlighting the, um, the tracking of our use of, of our telephones and the internet has been highly important to actually bring this to the forefront of national and international media. I think we have an important role in the European Parliament to actually work for the implementation and upholding the rights that we have as European citizens. Because we have a lot of fine regulation, some of it less fine, some of it more fine, but we have a lot of regulation and if we don't uphold that, then it's not really worth having it written down on paper if it's not going to be respected. And that's why I think we should, in the European Parliament, not only look at, well, how, much, how many more laws can we have written, how many more pages of text, but also looking at getting the text and the laws that we have actually um, up being upheld and having both member states and companies living up to their responsibilities. No further questions? In that then, case? Then um, I would thank you all for both being here at the camp and also coming to, to my keynote, which was a bit more values-based and aspirational and the ideas of how I would like to see the regulation that we have and how we act on it. Uh, there is, I'm starting out in five, for five years working in the European Parliament and I'm quite curious to see what will actually be proposed by the Commission. There has been a leaked document on, on how they want to look at the inter, uh, digital service market, single market, but new things will appear. And I would really 
like if all of you would help both me and other deputies of the European Parliament to keep fighting uh, for free and open internet and free and open society. A lot of the people that have left the European Parliament this summer, such as Julia Reda and Marie Cheshake, were strong proponents for a free and open internet and have left some quite large shoes to fill. And I hope you will be able to help me fill those shoes. Thank you very much.